Crypto King is not a financial advisor. Welcome, family, and thank you for tuning in to Learn Crypto TV. Today, we're going to talk about some of the top cryptocurrency trends for the year 2022 and beyond. And some of the topics that you, we're going to talk about here, DeFi trends, investment trends, you know, and a beginner's guide to Web3, possibly if we have enough time. So the first thing I wanted to talk to you about is institutional adoption of crypto in the crypto ecosystem. So you know that financial institutions and large corporations, they have been traditionally viewed as cryptocurrency ecosystems with skepticism. But today, many institutions are actively allocating capital to the area of cryptocurrency. Nowhere has this become more apparent than in the asset management industry. So by the end of 2020, $15 billion of institutional assets under management had been allocated to the crypto asset class. So you can look up different um, articles, one specifically on Reuters um, headline crypto fund inflows hit second highest on record as assets manage surge corn share um, according to corn share so you can check that out on Reuters and read through it to understand the context of what I'm speaking of so and this is compared to just over 2 billion at the end of 2019 which was a 5x increase or 5 times increase so in addition to the grayscale bitcoin trust they saw assets increase by 900% in 2022 yeah, excuse me, 2020. So while this amount is still small in comparison to the overall asset management industry, future regulatory clarity could help in bolstering the number. So until then, companies like Mass Mutual are helping to ease the transition, and they've invested $100 million into Bitcoin in 2020 as well. So large financial gatekeepers also are making it easier for consumers to transaction in cryptocurrencies. So industries like PayPal and the subsidiary Venmo have both enabled crypto trading on their platforms last year. Not only that, you if you're in America, the Cash App as well. PayPal data has showed that the users also bought crypto on the PayPal app that logged in as twice as much as they did before PayPal had allowed such transactions. So the CME or the Chicago Mercantile Exchange introduced micro ether future contracts back in December of 2021. So there was an article in CoinDesk and they noted that the number of Bitcoin wells and that's those Bitcoin addresses that own over 1000 Bitcoins. Those are, are considered wells and they have been increasing rapidly since the end of 2020. So a lot of people are believing in Bitcoin and they're dropping their coins into Bitcoin. So one of the other trends that we'll take a look at is DeFi powers more use cases DeFi is short for decentralized finance okay so almost nothing has drawn more attention to the crypto community last year than the advent of decentralized finance applications this concept basically involves traditional financial transactions that take place on the blockchain these transactions they are typically enabled by the use of smart contracts and unlike traditional payments or transfers, they avoid the need for financial intermediaries altogether or third parties. DeFi transactions usually range from traditional lending to, cre to the creation of derivatives. What's happening learn crypto tv family so right now i'm down in, in porta portal to now here getting ready to do like one of these little tour de tour guide deals or whatever y'all will see what it is once i get on um get on the uh where we get to going where we going 
But in the meantime, you know, what y'all saw was a, a part of the journey on the way here, you know, so with a group of four people plus me, and uh, yeah, get to experience something different in a different part of Bogota. Actually, I'm in the south part of Bogota, you know, in the um, south part of the city that I haven't been to before. So, you know, I just decided to take, take a chance and explore something different today. And uh, hopefully, you know, we can have some fun. But in the meantime, in between time, you know, you're looking at the crypto markets, man. It seemed like it want to bounce back a little bit. You know, Bitcoin, the last time I checked was up at 46000 and uh, you had Ethereum over $3,000 and stuff. Uh, man, I tried to tell y'all a few weeks back that, you know, now is the time for you to be accumulating and getting your portfolio all, all together so that way you can, uh, you know, take advantage of some of the gains. You know, I like Tezos right now, where Tezos is at right now. Um, also, uh, Polkadot's in a good buying zone. You have, uh, what other cryptos? Any internet of thing cryptos. Any crypt internet of thing cryptos. So, you know, do your own research, DYOR, like I always tell you, and um, you know, make some solid, it'll help you make some solid investment decisions. So in the meantime, you know, check out here where we headed to. You know, I don't know where we're getting ready to go, but you know, we had a, a large uh, transmillennial, transmillennial terminal. You know, it's very, very large and huge. A lot of buses over here in the south area of Bogota. So anyway, thanks for tuning in. And uh, we'll see you back in a second, man. Show you some of these beautiful views of the city from the south part of Bogota. So what is yield farming? Well, yield farming is in, involves lending crypto assets to other platforms in return for such interest in new cryptocurrencies. On the surface, yield farming is very similar to digital banking. Users deposit their crypto assets in a pool of funds and receive interest on those assets. But in many cases, the depositor is staking on a new crypto platform and will receive a new crypto asset in return for the liquidity he or she provides. In in a um, low interest rate environment in crypto, yield farming platforms have received notable attention because of their higher rates that they can offer to their depositors. So it allows users to deposit cryptocurrencies into a pool, receiving in return a redeemable token that represents a stake in that pool. Compound is basically acting as a central clearinghouse for crypto based lending. Compound is a project that you can go search out on CoinGecko. The amount supplied on the platform is currently $10 billion, and the total amount borrowed is roughly at $4 billion. In addition, platforms like Crypto.com are meshing the worlds of traditional finances and DeFi together. This platform allows users to place cryptocurrencies in digital wallets exchange cryptocurrencies, yield farm, and seamlessly pay with credit cards or prepaid debit cards like Visa using cryptocurrencies that the users have in their respective wallets. Yeah, family, so we made it up here to this point. These are traffic cars I'm about to jump inside. So I get y'all the views once we get down, uh, sit down inside. You know, look like it's gonna be beautiful headed over here to this neighborhood. It's called a paradise neighborhood, a barrio paradise. So that's what we getting ready to do. Yeah, man. So hope you hopefully you enjoy. Yes. So let me talk about a little of history. So Bogota is divided in 20 localities. Uh, here, Ciudad Bolivar is the third big. Okay. okay. Uh, after Kennedy and Suba. Okay. Uh, the locality is uh, called uh, the auto built locality because a lot of men that live here, they work on the construction area of Bogota, so they have the knowledge to build their own houses. Oh. As they start getting good material materials, because you're going to see that uh, this locality uh, is, and um, others too, but mostly this one uh, is, um, um, like um, identified because of uh, a lot of invasion and immigrants. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, you know, since the 15th, in the years 15, mm -hmm. uh, there was like the conflict between uh, conservatives and liberals. Okay. And so a lot of uh, uh, displaced people came, came from from these days. Then 
in the 80s and 90s uh, with guerrilla and paramilitarism, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. another wave of, imi of immigrants. Oh. And now with Venezuela immigration. Okay. So uh, now they are about to reach like a million inhabitants in mm -hmm. just in Ciudad Bolivar. So everybody that's displaced, uh, everybody's up there. Yeah, and in Usme, in uh, Kennedy, in the other uh, low income. Uh, so this is this is all low income over here. Yes, yes, oh. mostly uh, south of Bogota. You know, in Bogota, it's like north is for rich people and south for uh, for poor. Wow. And uh, over there, you can see Usme, another big locality of Bogota, and also very uh, humble, and. Uh, Behind those mountains, you have uh, Bosa, Soacha, Kennedy, and uh, Ciudad Bolivar is mostly on the, on the mountains. Okay. There's a lot of police over here, or not too much police? Uh, the same as everywhere. Okay. Uh, when they call them. Yeah, <laughs> not yet, but not so much. <laughs> and not so much, maybe we are more in, in, in the, the city. North. Yeah, where the money is at. Yeah, where the money is Over here, you, you deal with your own conflict. You know? <laughs> yeah, in holidays, yeah. a lot of people go to the street, to the okay. shops, and, and they have so much interaction. They know each other, they watch after each other. And, um, well, See, I believe at the beginning, as you're going to see further, uh, at the beginning there were like invasion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And some of them bought their land, some of them didn't. But There's also something called decentralized exchanges. And these have also proven to be popular over the last year as well. And these decentralized exchanges allow crypto owners to transact directly without the need for an intermediary or third party again. They also give users the complete ownership and control of their crypto assets. Monthly trading volume on decentralized exchanges is rising rapidly. In January of 2021, the monthly trading volume was $56 billion, an increase of over 1,000% from 2020's high of $26 billion in September, so a $30 billion difference. So the majority of the volume was captured by two of the largest decentralized crypto exchanges, and that's Uniswap and SushiSwap. Uniswap is a decentralized trading protocol for Ethereum and it provides liquidity to a large collection of decentralized finance applications that are native to the Ethereum blockchain. With just over 50% of the total value of the decentralized exchanges platforms, Uniswap is the undisputed market leader. So however, SushiSwap is a fork of Uniswap and is starting to encroach on the larger exchange territories. Now, SushiSwap exchange captured 23% of the total monthly trading volume in two, January of 2021. So what's more impressive than the current position, however, is SushiSwap's rapid growth. Just last year, it held a 1.98% of the total decentralized exchange volume market share. One of the most in interesting developments in crypto space is the rise of the non-fungible token or NFT. Now these tokens basically represent digital claims to a unique thing or asset. They, or the item they represent, can be digital or physical. Fungible tokens like Bitcoin do not necessarily represent any claim to an asset or physical theme. They can be traded by divided or, or divided into similar sm or smaller pieces, right? So NFTs on the other hand represent claims to things like domain names, physical or digital artwork, collectibles, and video game add-ons. Typically created on the Ethereum blockchain, most NFTs have embedded smart contracts that describe the digital or physical product that they represent. And for the most part, they are not divisible like fungible tokens that and that seems to be changing here. Okay, Learn Crypto TV family. So we made it up here. We basically at one of the higher points here in Bogota in the uh, neighborhood called Simone Boulevard. So, you know, it looks to be 
it's very interesting, man. Especially coming up here, y'all saw the little sights and stuff we was coming up on. You can see behind me. Yeah, and that is the uh, name of the uh, station we at right there. So yeah, man. You know, check it out. It's kind of cool up here, the wind blowing and all of that. Yeah, you can see behind me and stuff. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, man. So. Hopefully y'all like the tour. Y'all should try it when y'all come up here, man. You'll be at a very high or very elevated part of the city of Bogota, you know, and you get to see it from a different perspective. You know, a lot of people went to the Maserati. You know, you can see, I, I mean, I can see the Maserati from way back here. If you see, if you can see good, you know what I'm saying, through the lens. But you know, a lot of people see a high point of the city from there. But this here offers a whole other view of Bogota. So we getting ready to get into it. And uh, hopefully you enjoy it about Bitcoin? Is it going to reach new tops this year? Um, I believe that Bitcoin has an opportunity to reach a new top. Um, you know, nobody can really guess what's going to happen with Bitcoin per se, but I think that it has an opportunity to get back to 65,000. That is the original point um, of where uh, it touched as an all-time high. Yeah. However, you know, it's going to take a lot of uh, influx of uh, new new money new money in order to be able to get back up there so you know we'll see how it works out but i think that he has a good chance yeah what do you know about bitcoin well i invest in 2016 uh -huh. and i get a uh, nice little, return yeah a nice return uh, but this time i i want to double maybe triple <laughs> are you still are you still in bitcoin or, or did you sell it no i sell it but i Oh, again. So you're trading, okay? Yeah. You did a little trade, okay? Yeah. I understand. I'm like, a, how do you say, a phone? I'm a long term. Learn long term invest. trader. So that means you're a hodler. Uh, yeah. So learn crypto TV family. You just met a hodler. This is our tour guide, by the way. What's your name again? Francisco. Francisco. This is our tour guide. So he's the one that got us all the way up here in this mountain up here. You know, touring the uh, Simone Bolivar neighborhood, right? Ciudad Bolivar. Yeah. So that's yeah. where we are Welcome right here. Welcome to Ciudad Bolivar, but it's your neighborhood. Yeah, definitely. So you know. If you come here and you want to do this uh, trip, you can find the um, information in the description down below. You know, it's uh, relatively cheap to be able to do it. And then you have your tour guide to take you around and show you what you next know. You wouldn't do, if you didn't if you didn't do this tour, you wouldn't even come to this area of town. You wouldn't. So, but yeah. What are the, what other cryptocurrencies that uh, you invested in? Uh, no, just Bitcoin. I'm not too uh, versed. But like my sister does. She okay. she invests in you know, some other coins like Dash. Um, well, that's the yeah, only Dash. Thing I remember. <laughs> yeah, because Dash is being used in South America, okay. in Venezuela, and in Medellin, actually. Okay. So, you see, you see that just a random old conversation, you know, with the tour guide, and you get to learn something about Bitcoin and other crypto monedas. So. That's how you say that. Let me show y'all a little avenue we're walking down right now. Like a little... Uh, we're going to Mirador. We're going to a special place of Paraíso where you can see almost all Bogota. A really awesome view. So you heard that. So when we get over the Mirador, then that means you're going to be able to see a lot of the city. Much more than you would see at the Maserati. So, yeah. But it's really cool up here, so you definitely need to wear a jacket. Yeah. <laughs> Check it out. Because of the fragmented nature of this market, it is difficult to estimate the total size. But we can get a general idea by looking at an individual NFT's platform. Some estimates have placed monthly NFT trading volume at around $15 million 
as of October 2021. That number likely is to grow, however, as the market vo value for Ethereum NFTs, that sector grew to $33 million from $3 million in just the month of January alone. So on DAP Radar, they reported a weekly trading volume for the five largest Ethereum NFT marketplaces that had grew from $2.7 million in the week of January 19th of 2021. The general idea was popularized by marketplaces like CryptoKitties and CryptoPunks. Now these two tokens offer ownership in collectibles like digital rendered cats and pixelated artwork. As strange as it sounds, the CryptoKitties concept represented the first viable use case for NFTs. It is even estimated that over $40 million has changed hands in the CryptoKitties ecosystem with some tokens selling for around $300,000. One CryptoPunk even recently sold for $762,000, but there have been CryptoPunks that has been selling over for over a million as these two CryptoKitties and CryptoPunks are the pioneers, so to speak, of the NFT world. So. The art in the NFT adoption is definitely on the rise and companies like Super Rare are selling over $4 million a month in tokenized artwork and that was by the end of 2020. So in fact, the NFT's technology is solving ownership and copyright issues that have been long plagued in the art community and music as well. But platforms like Art Sync, excuse me, a Sync Art, they're allowing artists to collect royalties on future and secondary sales of the artwork. But the best platform for that, in my opinion, would be Audius. So you want to go check that out. And then how about another example? The NBA Top Shot. This is a par popular M FT marketplace and they deal with professional basketball collectibles and it allows fans to buy and sell digital video highlights of their favorite players. This new NFT market has blown past the competitors and it has generated over $30 million in sales in the month of January of 2021 alone. So for comparison, CryptoPunks, which is the second largest NFT marketplace, just sold for $4.9 million in that same period. So you can see the difference there. Yeah, family, learn crypto TV family. This is exciting. We up here. Uh, I guess this is the. I guess this would be the highest park point in Bogota. You know, it's a nice uh, little park here. They got basketball courts. You know, soccer goals. Kids up here playing. Families up here walking around. People just up here chilling and relaxing. But can you see the uh, these awesome views behind me, man? You know, just to come up here and be able to have this type of experiences. You know, this is the reason why you should think about traveling, man, and trying to go and adventure off and do other things, you know. And not everywhere has a landscape that's made up like this. And, uh, you know, and it's just something for memory's sakes. You know, if whether it's just you by yourself, you and a significant other, you and your family, whatever the case may be, man, just try to do something different in life, you know what I mean? And that brings me to investing, investing in crypto. Now imagine this, you know, once the crypto portfolios get to a point the way you want it and you can actually um i'm not quite there yet but i'll get there soon where i can just live strictly off of crypto monedas here and then i'll be able to do more of these youtube videos and and explore different parts of the city and find different things to do in order to bring to you guys not only giving you wisdom and knowledge in the crypto space but also telling you or showing you things like this you know where you can come and experience man this is absolutely amazing to be able to sit here and look at the entire, or almost the entire city of Bogota. The entire city of Bogota, man. And it's so beautiful the way that it's made up. So many different neighborhoods up there. You know, that's a whole different neighborhood right there in the mountains. You know, a whole different neighborhood. You know, it'll probably take about maybe an hour to get from where the point to where I am right now over to that area. But, you know, man, this is beautiful and it's absolutely stunning and breathtaking. So... You know, 
I could come here and this could be like a peaceful area where I can just come, even though I wouldn't because it just take too long to get over here. But you can just come and I can do crypto studies. I can find out the different projects that, you know, people should be looking at to invest in and things of that nature. So, you know, family, I just want to encourage you to do whatever it is that you can to just do something different. Live bold, live big. You know, it's a big world out here. And it's just not in that little box that you've been keeping yourself in. It's a big world out here. Go explore it. You can do yourself no harm. All right, so the next trending topic we'll talk about is re regulation. And we know that that is going to be unavoidable. So 2021 was a year of increasing regulatory clarity in the crypto market. And legal questions over the nature of cryptocurrencies themselves have continued to confound these regulators. The ripple, this ripple case or XRP, that illustrates the trend very well. In late 2020, the Securities Exchange Commission or the SEC brought a case against Ripple Labs, alleging that this company offered approximately $1.3 billion in unregistered securities when it sold much of its XRP cryptocurrency to the general public. But obviously, calls this was called into question for certain parts of the crypto market, and it is still unclear what's considered a security and what's considered a commodity in the digital world. So the CFTC or the Commodity Futures Trading Commission also brought a civil enforcement action against the notable cryptocurrency exchange BitMEX. The compliant alleges that BitMEX operates as an unregistered trading platform and flaunts the CFTC regulations like the implementation of anti-monitoring anti -monitoring, money laundering procedures, excuse me. And in the financial markets, arena many hope that in 2021 it will herald the introduction of the first cryptocurrency eft but as recently as october of 2020 the sec has said that it is actively working on regulations that will allow marketing and trading of cryptocurrency nfts so those are not in the market just yet as of today but the president's working group of financial markets they released a statement on stable coins so to speak or cbdc's to further investigate the concept but we all know that it's already in place so they're just smoke and mirrors at this point in my opinion talk about another subject area here in the uh world of crypto is going to be the market for decentralized applications and how it is actually span expanding these decentralized applications or dApps are what they're commonly called are software applications that run on a distributed peer-to-peer -peer network now the potential for this decentralized application is huge dap radar estimates that the total of d app app transaction volumes had increased from two set 271 billion dollars in 2020 up 21 billion from 2019 so many d apps they are running on the ethereum blockchain and perform some kind of decentralized finance functionality in fact the D -app centralized applications radar they found that roughly 45 percent of the new DeFi apps were running on the ethereum blockchain many of the most popular ethereum based decentralized applications they include Uniswap and Super Rare, uh, Super Rare, as I mentioned earlier. Outside of Ethereum, platforms like EOS or Tron are also gaining traction as well. And these two platforms are in second place with an estimated 750 decentralized applications within their ecosystem alone. So um, on the EOS blockchain, games like Upland is rapidly growing. If you don't know about Upland, Upland is a metaverse project and you can go and buy, sell and trade virtual properties mapped to real addresses. So you can build your dream house or you can start a virtual business using the UPX token on that platform. Yeah, so right there, family, that mural, the mural that you just saw right there, that's a timeline of the different transportation systems that this particular neighborhood had. So <laughs> you can see they started out with mules, man. You know, so this city, this this little barrio is very very old. But uh, yeah, that's thought that was pretty unique. It's a lot of good little graffiti art up here on the walls up here. You know, a lot of nice little artists up here and stuff like that. So I guess it's a little bar. <laughs> Hola. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, so yeah, but it's uh pretty chill and relaxed up here, man. But it is chilly though. I will tell you that that wind start blowing, the sun go down. It's cold up here, you know. But that's because of the high altitude. So, but yeah, man. Right, we get ready to go like to 3,100 3, meters. So we're 3,100 meters up in the uh, elevated up in the air at this point. So, you know, but now we're getting ready to go to a little bakery and get something to eat up, up here. You know, see how these people cook up here on this side. I'll show you that when we get in there. This metaverse style uh, property trading game allows you to do all of these things as if you were actually in the real world. Well, I don't know. They be ma they may be making this into a real world situation with this whole metaverse, but we'll just have to wait on time to wait and see what happens with that. But anyhow, I own about nine or ten properties within um, Upland, so you should guys go check that out. And one of the final topics I wanted to talk to you about is the stable coins and the CBDCs or central bank digital currencies and you know how they could definitely be altering to the crypto ecosystem. So Tether right now is the biggest stable or the most known or most used stable coin and this concept that they have is rapidly growing momentum but it has a some legal problems that it's trying to work with however you can still use it to buy sell or trade for other cryptocurrencies now admittedly about half of the market is made up from the usdt uh stable coin or tether is what it's called but this does not mean that growth can't come from other places Many times stable coins are used in the decentralized finance application because of their relatively price, um, stable price stability. And that's what the t term stable coin comes from anyway. So um, many feel like the proliferation of the stable coin could usher in an era of unregulated speculation in unstable private currencies. So these tokens are called central bank digital currencies, as I stated before, CBDCs. And they're um, looking to be about at least 80 percent of the central banks around the world. So in the developed world, the UK was the first to announce such a project and they have not been the last. You have countries like China, um, Iran, Russia and other countries around the world that are looking to create their own CBDC. Actually, China has one that's called a digital one that's already in place already. So. Um, these CBDCs are basically another way for the Federal Reserve in the U.S., for an example, um, to create a digital dollar and it would give them a uh, overreach um, to be able to, you know, kind of disrupt the international payment market, you know, by regulate regulatory things. Although the cryptocurrency space needs regulation, you don't need government to have the regulators let the people who are involved do the regulating. Okay, Learn Crypto TV family, so we made it into this bakery here. I'll show you in a second. It smells pretty good in here. I'm gonna try some of the Pandoria food up here in the mountains up here and see what it is. So I ordered a couple of different things just to see how it tastes and stuff like that. I got a bit of a sweet tooth right now, so I'm trying to satisfy that. You know, I'm not gonna really eat no lunch or di no dinner, I mean, here. Yeah, I wait till I get back down there on the ground in order to be able to find me something to eat there. So, uh, plus by being with a group, you can't really do everything that you would want to do. So I probably just have to find some time to come back over here on my own. And uh, cause I figured out how I could do that. So I just have to pick a good day and time for me to be able to want to do that. Now that I know how to get back up here. So uh, yeah, man, it's a pretty cool situation, but I would suggest that you do the tour here first with Francisco before you come up here trying to do it on your own. Cause you gotta at least know where to go and how to get here. So, but yeah, take a look at the Pandaria. So in conclusion, um, that's going to conclude the top trends to watch for right now in 2022 and moving forward. But the cryptocurrency market has been completely unpredictable over the last few years. And it's not only due to innovations like NFTs, 
but it's also due to the general market volatility with the mainstream coins like Polkadot, Litecoin, VeChain, and others, along with many of these meme altcoins like Shiba Inu, um, Dogecoin, and the new one that's on the block, Will Inu. <laughs> How about that? So one more thing is certain is that, however, this space will continue to have innovation and will continue to grow, and it definitely will be adopted into our society. All right, fam, so we leaving out of here off of the bakery. We headed back to the uh, to the uh, traffic cars, the little uh, cable cars. They head back down to the ground. And um, yeah, man, did you see that pastel on that video, man? Did you see that? Somebody having a birthday party, but the indication of what they do is all on that cake. <laughs> all on the cake. Look at that. <laughs> it's crazy. No, I'm saying this the car right here. That I was in the video. But everything, whoever Marcella is, you know what I'm saying? You know what she like and what she off up into. That's for sure. But, uh, you know, <laughs> that was wild. I ain't never seen it. And then it was a big black one at that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah. Pretty pretty cool and intense is the stuff you see, you know, here. Check this out. All right, family, so we made it up here to the uh, destination. We about to jump on these uh, these uh, cable cars and make it back down to the ground. So I'll show y'all some views and some photos of that with the night lights, cause y'all saw it with the daylight coming up. And now we going down, it's dark, and you'll get to see the city with the lights. So I'll show you that. And uh, yeah, hopefully you learned something today. Like always, this is what we do. Um, and you know, Definitely look forward to bringing you some more stuff, you know, and giving you that crypto information that you need in order to be able to invest wisely and invest properly. All like I always tell you, the DYOR, do your own research, and you know, that's the best thing that you can do.
Night Learn Crypto TV family. We're back on the ground now. You know, nice little tour. We was up, what, 3,100 feet up in the air, overlooking the city. In my opinion, that's probably going to be the best the best view of the city from all the points that I've been to, at least here in Bogota. But, uh, you know, other than that, man, hopefully y'all enjoyed the ride, enjoyed the views, you know, definitely the knowledge that you received. And, uh, you know, next time we'll see, we'll, we'll, we'll catch you on the next episode with something different. Um, you know, something that you possibly can do with you and your family if you're ever out in Bogota visiting or wherever it is that you may do in the world. Just find something to do exciting, you know, to get, take, do something breath, breathtaking or whatever. And then, you know, now you have your whole set of memories to go by. But anyhow, you know, y'all take care and I'll see y'all on the next episode. Ciao.